I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of trucks. That's because I grew up in the rural countryside of upstate New York, and to be honest with you, like it was kind of a mark of a, a rural man, which is fine to have a truck. I mean, that's just, just what people did. But I was more into like sporty cars and you know how like when the majority is doing something, a lot of times you just want to be the minority and rebel against it. That was my feeling about trucks. That being said, I did as an adult come to find that there was a lot of situations where I needed to have a truck and I was kind of sick of borrowing my neighbors. But at the end of the day, I never expected that we'd end up with one. And Unfortunately, that's exactly what Winston did. He uh, didn't even consult me and went out and bought a freaking truck. So Winston, why did you, at this wee hour of the night, come drag me out of my room as I was <laughs> laying there, tucking in my daughter? Well, because, well, we've got this fantastic new vehicle here on Worthless Whips. <laughs> why did we get this? <laughs> well, I'm not, I don't, I don't even like truck. So, Seamilk, what have we got ourselves here? This is a Ram. 2500 V10 Magnum from 2001. <laughs> yes. Uh, not something I expected that we would buy, but probably something that would be very useful for us. I tell you what, this is something I've been looking forward to. You can't be in America and not have a truck. True. And uh, this is a great starting point. It's 4x4, like you say, an 8 liter V10 Magnum, which is freaking cool. Uh, and it's an extended bed. Yeah. So just for just for comparison, how tall are you exactly? I'm six foot one. Okay, can you stand next to the, the second? This is a quad cab. You can actually open the second door. So it's taller <laughs> than you, okay, yeah. by quite a bit. All right, you see, yeah, you're six one. Yeah. This is a very tall truck. Um, but yeah, it's fantastic, you know? It's got the dual, dual pipes on the back, which is something that, uh, <laughs> yeah. So let me tell you why this is a worthless whip. Yeah. A lot of things are broken. Yes. And we got it very cheap. Yep. So that is why it's a worthless whip. It's a very huge, awesome, powerful truck, but it is not in working order currently. We barely got it to the gas station. Yeah. So we'll uh, take you through that a little bit later. Absolutely. But for now, guys, just incredibly excited. We're going to fill it up. We're going to show you how much, because it's bone dry right now, because that's what happens when you buy cars secondhand, apparently. They always give you no gas in the tank. Um, we're going to fill it up, and we're going to tell you just how much this thing takes. Let's find out. You know, there's a cool thing about these trucks. They've got this uh, segmenting thing here. Yeah. So you can put like planks to separate, stuff. separate yeah, the That's basement. pretty, that's cool. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Also, you see you can put a plank over there across the top and then you can actually have like a dual layer bed. Right. Which is kind of cool. This thing's just huge. I mean, huge. we could lay down in here. We literally, could. just here up at the stars yeah and it's four by four which is fantastic to take it anywhere yeah true sure. yeah this is a cool thing i think we did a did a good job this time i guess <laughs> you felt it drive i mean yeah the transmission slipping and uh it's missing headlight bulbs yeah there's probably other there's also a check engine light yeah there's a check engine light that's the fun of getting a worthless whip, is figuring out all the issues, you know? So I agree. tomorrow. And we'll make this cool. Yeah, we're gonna make this thing nah, awesome. It's gonna be a hardy, rugged truck that we can use all the time, but we're gonna make it awesome. And tomorrow, we're gonna look at the engine, we're gonna try and figure out what that check engine light's all about, see what we can do about the transmission slippage. It's gonna be good. Doesn't stop. It doesn't ever stop. It doesn't. <laughs> this thing. Yes, it stopped. Okay, hundred and five dollars to fill up. Very nice. And uh, that means that means it had four gallons in it because it's a thirty-five gallon tank. Okay. The the absolute scale of this thing. I mean, I'll be honest. A lot of people are going to be familiar with trucks this <laughs> size, sure. but like. Seriously, this is like yeah, you know, in gnarly South, big. South Africa, we have like Toyota Hiluxes are the biggest. Right, kind of that's like the, your big dogs. Yeah. Right? You have to literally climb in. You can't just stand up here. No. You have to climb in. <laughs> it's cavernous. It's quite big in here, which is kind yeah. of crazy because it's a long, it's extended bed too. Yeah, I actually like the seats as well. They're not bad. 
I thought they were gonna be cool. yeah they're very like work truck ish but yeah, yeah. Um, see how these suicide doors work they're super cool so check it out like so there's actually a handle right here you just pop it open bam now you can fit the kids in the back that's pretty cool yeah so I mean you can fit you can fit at least six people in here uh -huh. you know this also folds up and then it's like a nice storage thing and uh, I have a feeling that maybe folds down too, but whatever, it's just freaking cool. cool. Look at this real estate. It's like an office. It's even got this cool fold down. I actually heard rumors. What's that? I think you can even put a laptop computer <laughs> and a cellular phone <laughs> yeah. in here. If there's a rule that says a pickup is not an office, Dodge just broke it. Need a place for your cellular phone? How about a laptop computer? Check out the industry's only flip-down business console. It's a complete convenience storage facility. I, I think I have the exact phone that they were talking about. That's very true. <laughs> yes, awesome. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, uh, I recently had to move house. And I had to rent U-Hauls yeah. and, and all that. It was a big pain in the house. Yeah, you helped me. And I was thinking, why, why don't we just have a truck? Yeah. Because I like how you bought it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's true. But I was also thinking about all the times that we've had to go and buy some big piece of furniture or sure. something, and you know, you can't really shove it no, into. No, I get the, you. You know, it's always good to have something. Mm -hmm. And also, if we're going to go off road and go to somewhere cool, we've got this massive big thing. We can even throw our bikes in the back if we have sure. to. It's it's huge. So I, I just love the idea of having a truck. It's practical. It's cheap. We got this thing at a bargain. No, the, that's why it's a worthless whip. Let's mm. be honest. We're going to make this into the most amazing worthless whips truck. And you know what? I want to keep this. I don't want us to get okay. rid of it. I well, want us to use this. Well, we're we going to have multiple episodes. Yeah. You know why? Why? Because we're going to customize the shit out of this thing. Because yes. it looks like shit. It's, it it's is horrible. hideous. The front end of this really yeah. makes me want to throw up. It does look terrible. But we can make it cool. Yeah. It's just, big enough. Just think about how cool it would be. We could put like both families in the... In the back, in the yeah. bed, go to the drive-in or something. We could. You know, we might have to fun. do that. Yeah, on it's video. Be super fun. That's heavy. How does it? How does this open? I don't know. Never, never done this on a Ram. Sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> I've never fiddled a Ram. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> Where's the Ram latch? <laughs> yeah. I think this is it over here. <laughs> But Open you, it up! There we go. Jeez. Oh, look at All that. Right. So that's a that's a V10. Yeah. That's, that's like a, a school bus, dude. Eight liter V10. That's pretty sick. Yeah, that's that's freaking. From what I can tell, the engine seems to be fine. It's just the transmission slipping. Yeah. Someone's come in here and painted things up though, because I don't think yeah. it's supposed to be red. I apologize for the the night time. We literally just took delivery of this, and it's super super late at night. So. Oh, and I love the fact that there's like missing. Oh, great. Missing stuff. That's normal. Here, I got a little bit of light. You can get Thanks. the 8 liter. Yes. Got to do some eagles. Insert eagle sound. This has got all the freedoms, dude. 8 liters of eagles. <laughs> all the freedoms. <laughs> Are those like leaf springs under the, the engine or something? Whatever they're oh, no, those, those are, are the headers. Friends. Oh, that's the headers? <laughs> yeah. What the heck? Yeah, well, intake, well I mean the exhaust manifold. I oh, okay. Say. It looks yeah. bizarre. Yeah, it is. That means it's stock. Some someone has painted up the engine, but it yeah. looks like they haven't messed. It's with a California things. truck, so yeah. it's smog. Yeah, it would well, have it to smog. have to pass smog. It smells. Oh. It smells like a very used car. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait. <laughs> Why is there a power steering? I'll tell you what. Though? This is a great sign when you've got brake fluid and power steering fluid under the hood. That means that it leaks brake fluid and power steering fluid. <laughs> what did you buy? <laughs> I don't know, man, but I love it. This is what happens when you buy something. I know, but I freaking love it. This is amazing. This I mean, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer here, but seriously, I had very little say in this. <laughs> okay. You're going to love it. Don't Usually worry. Usually I'm the one that's searching for the car. Yeah, I know. You're going to love it. Don't worry about it. Since when are you a truckman? What, what happened to our friendship? I think, you used to be cool. I think I might just turn out to be a truck guy. Don't be a truckman. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh yeah, take a look. <laughs> what did they do? Just take him before he sold it to us? That's one thing I noticed is there's no headlight bulbs. Because I tried to turn on the headlights and I was like, hey, there's no lights. It's well, not even it's not even uh, wallflowers in it? <laughs> no. No. I mean, it's it's no headlights. 
Oh, is that what passes for headlights these days? Yeah. These crap L LEDs. Yeah, so um, I was like, where are the lights? And I looked in there and the bulbs actually don't exist. <laughs> They've actually just <laughs> removed them. What is wrong? Who sold us this? I'm, I'm guessing what happened was the guy probably like had some fancy HIDs in there. Oh, okay. He was like, I'm not giving them that. Yeah, before, yeah. It, it, he, you know what? I know why he sold this truck so cheap. I get it now. It's literally like every time he's like, I'm gonna go to work, I'm gonna move my bricks or haul my wood or whatever, mm. right? And he goes, yep, time to top this up here. Let me top this up here. And then eventually you're just like, screw this. <laughs> yeah, and then he, let he me take the bulbs. his bulbs back. Yeah, well, at least we got fog lights. So, you know, with, <laughs> with the fog lights, there we go. I think with the fog lights, we at least can drive We're going to get pulled over. But here, we've got these, they kind of look the like... The cops ones. are going to be like, what, what did you actually do with your <laughs> headlight bulb? Yeah, exactly. All right, well, let's do a little uh, dry limp home. We'll see how she runs. Absolutely, can't wait. Yes. Sweet. Okay, ready? Yep. Okay. All right, let's see what we got. 169,000. And see. four. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 169,004. I've just zeroed nice. the trip meter so we can see how much we get off a full tank. Okay. Um, check Which engine light. Which costs us over $100. Yes, yes. So check engine light. I hope we get more than 100 miles. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we're probably ready to fire her up. Fire her up, let's see. Oh, yeah. Nice. Low wash. sound very good. Oh, yeah, Low no, this, this sounds great. Yeah, the pipes, are the pipes stuck? No. Oh, okay. It's got like dual pipes. Someone's put that on, which is cool. I, I don't like those like single side no, things. No, those are ugly. Got little little things here and there. We'll, we'll do a deep dive eventually. We'll probably find things yeah. in here that we don't See? want to. Yeah, four wheel drive, guys. Yeah. If that's the thing. That's what you want. Hey, look, cup holders. It's nice for like big gulps. Hell yeah. I can't Hell wait yeah. to have a big coffee over there. And nice. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, drink it, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now it's got Whoa. overdrive off, overdrive on. It's got overdrive. Yeah, leave overdrive on. Yeah, obviously. All right, let's uh, see see if she goes. Whoa, <laughs> oh, is that a shift? That's Guys, a very... that was not a bump, that was a shift. Yeah, it's a very bad shift. Holy crap. Whoa! Oh, yeah, we've got issues. Oh, my it's just gosh. slipping. <laughs> it's just slipping. It's like no. a scooter with a missing bell or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, hopefully it's just low on transmission fluid. Yeah, among all the fluids. Because look, I oh got it. Oh my gosh. Going. Like if I keep it under a thousand RPM, then we go somewhere. Okay, I'm gonna try floor it. Okay. Okay, it's moving now. Oh, it actually, it's not bad. Yeah, once it's in here. Whoa. Listen to it. That sound, wait, that sounded wrong. Yeah, you know why? I really think that the, the uh, transmission modulator has got an issue. Okay. That'll be something to fix. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. You had a little bit of pull there. A little bit, yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we ride really... It sounds interesting. Yeah, I love the sound of it. Yeah. We're riding really high up as well. Sure. The obligatory, what is that, a Pioneer? You get, it's it's definitely one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. It has a remote and someone didn't lose it. Of okay. all things to okay. not lose. Let me just say, okay. <laughs> What's the freaking point? I always wondered that as well. May as well just reach over and... But I don't think I've ever seen one that, that, that held on to it. Like know, they right? still have it. They use that remote. I know, it's so bizarre. Of course, I realized something very interesting when you accelerate hard. This entire front face of the dash comes loose, so that's wonderful. Hey, at least the rest of the dash is not cracked, like on most of these. Ugh. I gotta say, <laughs> American cars have, especially from the sort of 90s and uh, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, they've got the worst build quality, don't they? But I'm amazed, these seats are in great condition, you know? That's one thing, like, this has obviously been an abused truck. Um, Ugh, I hate these steering wheel covers. It'll be interesting to see what's underneath it. Because usually people put them on for a reason, right? Maybe they just wanted to look cool with this ram. So yeah, I did actually take the steering wheel cover off. And uh, while Seamilk and I were in the parking lot about to hand it over to the car wash attendant, 
We took it off, and I tell you what, it was disgusting. It felt like grease crumbs underneath there, and uh, <laughs> I pity the guy who had to drive it into the car wash, because I couldn't even stomach touching it. I had to sort of drive by holding the spindles of the steering wheel. Anyway, glad to have that thing gone. Let's see if she'll start. This is our cold start the next day. And you never know when you buy a used car if it's going to start the next day. So here goes nothing, right? Okay. And... Oh, what do you know? Starts right up. That's awesome. So I guess it's not in incredibly bad shape. Oh, check it out. I really like this. You've got all these different things here, so it tells you your direction and the temperature. You can even use it in my unit, so it's 11 degrees right now. Um, I guess that's the odometer. <laughs> and it's reached its max. Oh, you can reset, can you? Oh, nice, so you can do a trip meter. Silence. Okay. Um, average mile a gallon, 7.1, nice. Current mile per gallon, zero. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what that is, DTE, probably like how many miles you've got left in your tank. Time, and off. I think I'll leave it on that one. That's cool. Yeah, I'm actually liking this a lot. We'll try the AEC and all that a little later after I've checked all the fluids. But so far, yeah, this thing's awesome. Just, I've done uh, an, initial, an initial Bluetooth scan. I've got two codes. Um, both, both of them are O2 sensor related, so the okay. heater performance of the O2 sensor and the uh, O2 sensor circuit high. So basically, probably looking at replacing oxygen sensors, I don't know which ones yet. So, um, so far it looks like we've def definitely got oxygen sensor issues. Okay. That's not going to help us unfortunately with our transmission slippage issue, and I checked the transmission fluid is full, so I was just hoping it'd be low. This is a very progressive truck. Sure. So probably have to replace the filter and a couple of things in the transmission because once it warms up, it seems to be fine. So it's probably right. just clogged, you know? Okay. At least I'm hoping. Can I put the camera down and finish my lunch? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure okay. you can. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. So there's a big issue here. Yeah, it's got, it's actually got lots of power. Yeah, the power is there. But it only shifts up into third gear and it doesn't get into the fourth gear. Yeah, we tried to put it, we thought it was in second <laughs> and uh, we locked up all the wheels. Yeah, that wasn't good. I feel so, like it's in four wheel drive, but it's not though. It's not. We so we can fly. go a max speed of like 40. Right. Com comfortable cruising speed of 40. This is not ideal. Yeah, you know what, let's try the aircon. We haven't done that yet. Okay. So, no, I'm putting it on full yeah, cold. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh yeah, um, it's a crap song anyway. Uh, let's see, so AC max and... Okay, so uh, by now you've probably figured out that yes, we actually were in four-wheel drive. Now in our defense, there is supposed to be an indicator on the dash that tells you that the vehicle is in four-wheel drive. I can't really read this properly, but I feel like the reason why we can't drive is because it's in low gear four-wheel drive. Yeah, we don't know much about this, mm. but we, we do know that we're probably not supposed to be in this gear. Yeah, I feel like this is when you're doing rock climbing or whatever they call it, mudding or something. Or like pulling stuff. Yeah, right? like truck pulls or something. So let's probably try that and then we'll then we'll complain about the transmission later. Yeah, so let, let's pull into like, we're just going to pull into a shopping center up okay. ahead. And then we're going to see if we can actually engage two-wheel drive. Okay. High or whatever. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, I, 
This yeah. makes sense now. The front wheels are like chirping around there. Sure. So let's see how this works. How do you? There's like a should be like a like a diff thing, like a, a pedal. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think you're talking nonsense. Um, there should be a thing. Uh, no. I might have to Google this. You lift it, put it down, shift it to the side. Might have to Google this. Let's Google it. So you have to be in neutral according to the internet, and then okay, now it's moving, but. Now it's just in neutral. Oh, there we go. So we got 4H is obviously four wheel drive high. Sure, if the roads are bad or whatever. Two wheel drive high. That's what we want here in California. I, I think that's what you need. I don't know what neutral is all about. Like it's not gonna just let's spin. Find out. Yeah, let's see. Okay, let's see. Look over the passenger sun visor instruction on four wheel drive shift. Oh, <laughs> it's literally <laughs> yeah, right there. Okay. Two wheel drive, four wheel drive, neutral, disengages the axles from the powertrain. So that won't. So we've been in low speed four wheel drive, maximum pulling power, slippery loose road surfaces only. So we were like yelling at the car, saying this sucks. Yeah. And it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maybe it's not as, you know, it's yeah. funny. What if what? the guy we bought it from literally just has been <laughs> driving it like that? Well, I mean, it, that, that was the whole thing is that it has, um, you know, transmission issues. And so, well, we're going to find out now. Well, let's see if this is the transmission issue. Okay. I'm gonna find out shortly. Okay. All right, here we go. So this is now in two. Yeah, this is too high. Watch out. Oh. Might wanna take, take the off parking brake off. Break off yeah. Okay, so this is too high. It's not too high. Nothing's ever too Nothing's high. Nothing's too high. It's yeah. never too high. Yeah. Okay. It's normal. Yeah, now. the front wheels are not chirping around. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. Trying to mess around here. Well, at least we know the four-wheel drive works. Yeah, that's cool. Now let's see if the truck actually works properly. Yeah. There's a lot of speed bumps here. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really soak up the bumps. No, it certainly that. doesn't. Um, I'm getting ill. I'm getting <laughs> sick in this thing. And I don't mean like, wow, this is sick. <laughs> It's a sick truck, bro. It is. It's making me sick. I actually don't know if this is the right route. It doesn't matter. Let's yeah, test it out. All right, here we go. Yeah, well, that's that's a big difference right there. At least we can say that the transmission is okay. I think. I so, think. So far. It's, it's better than it was, let's yeah. say. Yeah, it's still like... Still a little slippy. slippy. sensors and all the little to check 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 things that we made yeah and uh, we'll go get it washed up absolutely this stupid low wash <laughs> which means that the uh, you know windshield washing liquid is low that is freaking annoying so the first thing we decided to do since we're going to go and clean this car is pop by an auto Riley's and get some window washer along with some coolant and other little bits and pieces and of course our oxygen sensors yeah there's nothing in there so that makes sense it's got a cap right now yeah that's got a cap stupid childproof stuff okay now this is going to be a challenge let's see if i can manage to do this without spilling i i highly doubt that i think it's impossible am i lined up even ah uh, yes did you find the trickle yes getting there every car we get doesn't have oh wait steel fluid. what it's just leaking straight out. Oh, is that why? A rat's chewed through the... That's why. A, a rat chewed through the, the, the bloody tube. Oh, that's great. What a waste. Oh, well, save I mean, that fluid. Save this fluid. Tell you what, I'm going to go throw it in the bed. Oh, might as well, right? Oh, yeah, it's just leaking right out. 
Well, Freaking yeah. rats, dude. Damn rats, they chew through everything. Just, why didn't the previous owner just get a new bottle? It's not the bottle, it's oh, a it's tube. Oh, line? Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Now, there should be a line somewhere here. Can you see a line? Yeah, what? Yeah. Where? Okay. Yeah, it's just empty. Okay, I'll tell you when it's, when it's there. I think this is the biggest farce ever. By the way, if anyone out there knows, why is it that you get different coolants? Yeah. What's the point? Why is it that you this get a... This is called orange oat formula. <laughs> but no, why is it for American vehicles? I don't know. Water is water. Yeah. This is water with antifreeze, you know? Right. What's the difference? Okay, let's see if we have better luck. Oh. More out than in, really. Let me make sure this is a leak in there. Yeah. You need to tell me when it's full on the other side. Sure. Really hard to see anything in that bottle. Well, there's a line, right? Yeah, it's just I don't see any coolant. Really? Yeah. Come here, look. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, I can see it in here, though. Oh, yeah, it's full. It's full. It's full. Is it full? Yeah. You can see it there. Oh, you, yeah. Oh, look, Very you can cool. see when there's no light on it. It's uh, not cool. It's got a little not, way to go. Okay, cool. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you overfill this anyway. Oops. Oh, it's only Oh no. <laughs> yeah. ah, what have you done to these poor people's but parking lot? This is leaking too. I mean, that's. No, it's because you overfilled it, I think. No. No, because you know you're splashing everywhere. Yeah, I get that. That's hopefully that. We'll see if there's something yeah. remaining when we get back. Sure. Okay. I certainly hope so. Well, you know, here's something cool that we got. Look at this. There we go. Isn't that better? A little cap. Add so much. Yeah, the drips have slowed down. Okay. Work I did. Don't worry. Let's get out of here before they like yeah, call they're... the EPA on our ass. <laughs> And then they can be like, there's a Dodge Ram with license plate. Uh, <laughs> exactly. All right. So the truck actually cleaned up quite nicely, but that's not the most important thing. We've got a lot of little technical issues to take care of, and they're all underneath the hood. And it's still filthy under there. You know what? I'm not going to do a single thing on this truck. Not one little bit until this is all clean. I mean, there are rat turds. There's one. I mean, and rat urine, like here. That's rat urine for you. And it's just filthy. I'm gonna get hantavirus if I work on this thing. <laughs> what the hell? See how those turds flying the in the air? Okay, so we're going to do some very basic things on the truck on the big V10 and since it is a truck I've gotten myself the appropriate sort of box opener and that is a K-Bar <laughs> you know if you're gonna be driving a big V10 truck you may as well have a K-Bar there we go and that was a complete overkill to open a little box you know what I guess that's what truck people do what I've got in here is I have a new set of spark plugs an air filter and um, all right I'm gonna try this out this thing is leaking power steering fluid everywhere and let me show you what's going on see these big puddles down here this is power steering fluid and it's leaking right off of the the actual steering box you know it's right I'll show you right over here is where the big drips come and then it gets on this sort of sway bar goes all the way there and drops down there as well now that's the seal that's bust so it's not the pump and I'm gonna try a little bit of that stop leak stuff and hopefully it just fixes it I'm not a big fan of stop leaks of any kind because usually they just do more damage than good but the difference is that this needs to come out anyway which will be a big job and so I may as well try it. 
the worst thing that can happen is the power steering pump and the the steering box which needs to come out anyway to be refurbished uh, get gunked up so let's give it a try so first thing I'm going to do is completely clean this and um, then we can start to get to work replacing all the filters and all the fluids and trying out that stop leaks and various other things I love the amount of space on the side of the engine to work and let us replace that not loving so much down here but it's actually it's fine if you take this air the air filter thing out of the way you actually have almost just a, just about the same amount of space it's great I'm gonna remove this crap that someone stuck on here to look fancy because it does nothing it's not shielding any heat or doing anything at all it's just plastic and there's a lot of it so that'll clean things up a little bit give it a nice deep clean and I can't wait to see I can't really can't wait to see what it looks like when it's done so get your before because we're gonna have an after see I'm actually gonna have to use a step ladder in order to get up here and do the cleaning because yeah this is a tall tall car um, I guess what I'm gonna do to start is I'm going to whoops <clears throat> I'm gonna remove that red crap quickly um, and then after I've removed that we'll give it a bit of a degrease and uh, go from there This is melted on top of the alternator here. It's just not a good idea to have this stuff on your car. It doesn't look great. I understand if you've got wires going everywhere. I've done that before on my, my 78 Trans Am where the wiring was all, you know, the loom was all a mess. So I used it to cover up the messy wires. But these are your air conditioning, uh, you know, sort of lines and they, they do get very cold and very hot and whatever. And uh, you don't need to be messing with them, just leave them the way they are. Looks like it's probably been repaired in the past. So maybe they try to cover that up, but either way it looks crap. And it's all over this stuff down here too. And this looks like the heater hose. Could be wrong, but I just don't get it, there's no point. It certainly doesn't improve the appearance of the vehicle. In fact, it's so sloppily done with those black cable ties. I mean, yeah. I'll be honest, painting everything up in these red accents as well just doesn't do it for me. I, I get the idea, but it doesn't look very nice. And see, it starts to peel. Kind of wish you just left it original. But we'll make do with what we have. I'm gonna have to retouch that up. I'll probably, once the cleaning's done, I'll think about taking that plate off and painting it black. The red eight liter V10 on the top. Maybe I can, so it is aluminium. Maybe I can file it down and make it silver. Probably look much better. And that, it's just come off, so. Anyway, back to the cleaning. See, I wanna point out just how dumb it is to put this stuff on, okay? Now, this is a power steering, yeah, power steering cable. You know, it's either the high pressure or a low pressure, I don't know which one, but it's uh, coming out of the pump. And it goes all the way down there near to the exhaust manifold. And this plastic sheath, let me just pull it out here, has melted. You can see it's melted. And that's not what you want, because if this stuff melts, it can just cause issues. It can actually damage the, the line that's underneath it. It could fall down into you know, drip down into some kind of anything. It's just not a good idea, it's dumb. So don't, if you're gonna use this crap, don't put it near to your exhaust manifold anyway. Just don't use it really. I just noticed something I really don't like here. 
loose wires and a big bundle of crap. I'm trying to figure out what this is all about. This is pretty much looks like an earth of some kind. But what is it for? That's the question. Oops, there goes the GoPro. So this mystery wire, although it looks like it could be an earth, it goes to a red wire, which kind of goes all the way down the wiring lumen, down past the steering column, which it's rubbing against, and down there somewhere. So we'll follow that later, and we'll figure it out, but that's not something you want. You don't want these random wires knocking about in your engine bay. Those of you who didn't see it earlier, this is where the rats have chewed through the spark plug wires. It's in multiple places. I mean, we also have rat chewage over here, which that's no good because that's the expansion for the radiator. So that's where we're losing a lot of our radiator fluid is through there. Um, here, <laughs> you can see another rat chew. Here you can see again, coming from the expansion bottle, how a rat is chewed through that. Um, this over here is the, I think this is like the evap purge solenoid, something like that. Uh, this is the evap leak detector pump. This is the purge solenoid, one of the two. And uh, if we have any rat chews on any of these wires, it will not pass smog. So I'm gonna have to go through all of those, go into the car, check it later, but for sure the coolant Looks like the rats really love coolant for some reason. They're just going for it, you know? Anyway, those, those have to be replaced. Another thing for the list. One thing about having a kid that grows up fast is you have a lot of spare clothes because you know they grow out of them. So you use those as rags, which is good. Um, I'm letting it soak. Now, the reason I'm just spraying stuff on and soaking it without just like power washing it or anything like that is a number of reasons. Number one, never power wash an engine if you can help it. And if you do, you have to do a lot of prep work covering all the electrics and stuff because you know it really gets the water into those little vital spots. But number two, you don't want, you know, all the grease and chemicals and crap going in, you know, into the road and into the gutters. Especially not here in California, they'll find my ass and put me in environmental jail or something. So I just want to let it all soak in and then I'll wipe it all off and hopefully nothing will even hit the ground. Let's see how it works out. I mean, already just take a look at that. Uh, don't forget, I'm going to still come over and go and uh, use some kind of polishing product or something on this if I have some. I don't know, I haven't checked in the garage, but uh, in the meantime, just look at that. The difference already of just letting that soak a little bit and then rubbing off all the crap. This engine's gonna clean up nice, and you mark my words. Really annoying. You saw there was that like nylon braided sheath that the guy had over here previously. There's no reason for it to be there. Absolutely none. And it's actually damaged. Uh, you can see where, it, you know, the cable tie that was holding it in place has kind of melted. Some stuff has melted onto the, the pipe here, and it's debrazed this pipe. This is not what you want. This especially is where, you know, all your coolant's flowing. It gets incredibly hot. You don't want anything on there. So stop doing this braided crap. rats have been chewing through the alternator wire as well. This is definitely something I need to tape up. Don't want that uh, shorting out. Damn rats. Where was this thing parked anyway? <laughs> Little rat, rat toilet over there. And I don't even know what's going, going on down there. 
So Seamilk's giving me this this kid's mask, which should uh, work. I don't I don't know. I got rat turd on my hands. Hang on. It's really gross. There's so much rat turd. That'll work. I mean temporarily, yeah. I'm gonna attempt to blow some of it out with compressed air. See if it works. Uh yeah. Oh it's so gross. This doesn't help me. What the hell? See how those turds flying the in the air? I can't be around this. <laughs> Use the GoPro. Ugh. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> that stuff is everywhere. Well, I managed to get a bunch of it out anyway. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, yeah, I don't have a mask on. Well, <laughs> and that to me. I'll show everyone the... Uh... Oh, I'm out of here. All right, see you later. Here's some of the aftermath of rat turd. That turd heaven. It's just turds lying everywhere. Oh, it's so disgusting. Not a big fan. Okay, <clears throat> now remember the goal here is slash was not perfection. It's just getting it clean enough that I can work on the thing without catching some rat disease. I think we did a fairly good job. Uh, getting rid of that red stuff was great. Here's your after shot. I'll probably take a photo with my phone as well. Well, I can tell you it's a hell of a lot better to work in here now that everything's clean. I mean, I mean actually, I'm still wearing gloves, but I can just touch stuff and it smells good. It doesn't smell like rat urine anymore. I don't know about this thing being sporty, but whatever. Today, we're going to attempt to get rid of that check engine light. So I'm going to crawl under here, hence the cardboard. I'm going to look and find out where the oxygen sensors are, and then we're going to try and replace them because that's what's throwing up the code. Now, on advice from actually all of you guys, I ended up getting all three oxygen sensors. This particular, let's see, this particular truck takes three oxygen sensors. And I believe you have your upstream left, your upstream right, and then this is obviously your downstream uh, and the reason being that, according to the codes anyway, two of the oxygen sensors have an issue. And if two of them have an issue, your third one's probably on the way out. They're obviously still the originals. So I just went ahead, paid the extra. I, I, you'll probably notice that I've got three different brands because that's all they had at the Auto O'Reilly's. But, you know, it doesn't matter. I just got to get this thing 
uh, ready to pass smog because that's what we're going to do today is we're going to actually take it in and see if we can get this thing to pass so <clears throat> yeah let's go underneath the truck figure out where these oxygen sensors are and we will take it from there okay so since we're down here under the truck we may as well <clears throat> take a proper look around and see what we can see um, this looks to be an aftermarket uh, transmission pan oil pan whatever you call it which is cool made in the USA I can see that over here hang on, over here we have our uh, that'll be our one upstream oxygen sensor you know, which goes so I'll have to trace the plug back and uh, over here we have our other upstream Ups oh no hang on up there we have our other upstream this then is what this is just before the catalytic converter. This is a catalytic converter here. Um, and so, a little confused. Do we have another one? We do, we have another one down there. So there are four oxygen sensors. What the heck? That would be the downstream one. Okay. So, ah uh, man, this is frustrating. So we got one over there, which looks like it's it's a hassle but it's not too difficult to get to we've got one over here which is super easy to get to we've got one over here just in front of the catalytic converter and then we've got one after the catalytic converter which would be the downstream one and any others no let's just take a look at the rest down here see what we got so um this is the transfer case for the four-wheel drive we have our beefy drive shaft that goes all the way down this is all cracked and broken here, which is fantastic. That needs to be welded up. And um, here's our massive fuel tank. That thing is huge. It needs to be with a big truck like this. Um, it's a little strange. Don't know what's going on with these wires. I wonder if this has got something to do with that mystery wire that we had in the front. I still haven't traced that, but I'll get, I'll get to it. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much how, how it goes. It looks fairly okay down here, except for this this cracked weld that we have um, on this muffler. And that's something I, I'll get taken care of. But yeah, let's see what we can do about these oxygen sensors. It looks like I'm one short, which is frustrating. Taking out first. Uh, don't worry, it wasn't this loose. I, loosened, I did loosen it with a wrench or a spanner. Uh, this is the probably oxygen sensor one bank one one slash one because it's on the driver's side somebody out there correct me if i'm wrong but i believe this is going to be your upstream left that i was sold at the auto part shop so that's what i'm going to put in here i'm going to put the upstream right and then well i've got an extra one i hope that one of those two is not faulty but i remember that we had uh, the the error was for one slash one and one slash three so i'm going to replace one slash one one slash two hopefully the one just before the catalytic converter is one slash three we will find out this is what the um old sensor looks like focus you know um don't know if there's anything actually wrong with it, but that's what it looks like. Let's compare it to our new sensor, shall we? Shiny. Oh, that's just wonderful. Look at that. That is the wrong plug. Thank you, Auto O'Reilly's, for ruining my day. Let's see if any of the others have the right plug. What the hell, Auto O'Reilly's? All three of them have this stupid square freaking thing on them. You pieces of turd. I can't believe this. Now I'm going to have to put this old crap thing back in there and then go get these things swapped out. Get in the zone. I want to put into perspective just exactly how, how chewed up some of these... I mean, I just cut a section of this off. It goes like this the whole way along. This is the window washer um, hose. I mean, these freaking rats really, really love to eat crap. Rubber and window washer fluid. So I got new hoses and uh, luckily, uh, Auto Riley sorted me out. Now, sometimes you get the situation where, like with this car, I think it must be a half year model. So, you know, it's supposed to be a 2001. But every once in a while you get a 
2000, well, a half year, which basically, let me get my thoughts together here. Um, this is supposed to be a 2001, okay? So I got oxygen sensors for a 2001 model and they don't fit. However, these are 2000 oxygen sensors and they are the correct ones. So I guess what happened was this is just like old, they use the half year old stock wiring harnesses and stuff or whatever on this particular one. So it's a very early 2001 model is what I'm trying to say. But these are correct. So this is supposed to be, well this is nice, it's Bosch. So it's expensive and posh. This is a downstream one we're not gonna use for now. I'm gonna go replace this upstream sensor um, and we'll take it from there. Well, this is quite nice. It comes with anti-seize already on the threads. Sorry, it's a garbage truck in the background. <laughs> do, do, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you can see the difference. I'm gonna just install it up in here. There's a heavy smell of dog turd under this truck for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, lovely new Bosch. Let's get it tightened down. I mean, you don't want to overdo it. Just good enough, really. Okay, and now I just need to plug it in up here on the wiring harness, so I'll do that. Alright, so this hose over here, lovely new hose that I've got for the expansion bottle, it's important. You know, it's a pressurized system and when the, uh, the coolant gets too bloody hot, you know, it gets rid of the excess and basically pumps it into this expansion bottle and then sucks it back in, you know, when it needs it. So it's a very integral and important part of your whole cooling system. And so what's been happening is when it gets uh, to a certain temperature, trying to go out of this hose, it was, you know, just basically pissing out because it had rat chew holes in it. Now this still has a rat chew in it down here, but this is not important. This is the overflow. So basically what happens is if there's just too much in here, it escapes and leaks down onto the road. That's what this is all about. Uh, it doesn't go back into the engine or anything, so it doesn't even matter if it just pisses out of there or down there. Uh, I, I do want to replace it anyway, but for now, that's not the important part. This is the important hose, so let's get this sorted out. And I also have a replacement hose for that really chewed up um, window washer thing, which will be interesting to test to see if it works. Chewed all the way. Like this, I had to get a little hose extender this is what you use for like your irrigation or something like that <laughs> so i'm using that uh to match these two hoses up because it you know they chewed so much i had to cut it over here and i'm going to root it down the way it was originally and zip tie it to the the um, harness or whatever to make sure it doesn't get in the way of anything and uh, i'll let you know when that's done but in the meantime here this is all hooked up you can see i put a proper hose clamp on there it's not going anywhere so I'm pretty happy that the cooling system is now okay. So let's continue. Now this lid says washer fluid only. Guess what? Water is a washer fluid. I'm just filling it up to test to make sure it doesn't leak or anything. Um, I'll put some proper washer fluid in it later. That's probably good enough. I mean, that's plenty and I see water knocking about in there. And now, I'm gonna have to just check and see if it's leaking anywhere. But most importantly, we're gonna test if these things work. Testing for two things. Number one, I'm gonna start here with that new oxygen sensor, see if we have an error, but that's not the main thing because that takes time, it has to warm up and all that. I wanna see if that low washer fluid crap comes on. Okay, so, so far so good. I'm not seeing that stupid low wash come on. 
Even more importantly, let's see if it works. Oh, look at that. Can you see that? Can you see what I see? Do you see what I see? What is that shit from? That's freaking cool. Okay. Score one for the good guys. Zero or nil to the rats, those pieces of shit. I mean, we're seriously getting there. The whole point is when you take a vehicle in for smog is you can't have any lights up on the dash. I mean, sure, they're not gonna fail you for having a low wash light, but any light's just a bad idea. So if you can clear them all, that's what you wanna go for. So far, so good. Everything's holding. I'll have to drive the truck around a bit to see if that check engine light comes back on, but we might be on the correct path. And just like that, the foul check engine light was defeated. It has not come back on and I've driven the truck around a couple of days now to test. So we've gotten rid of that problem. There is, however, the issue of some massive exhaust leaks and I'm pretty sure if we take it into the smog shop with these big holes in the exhaust, they're just gonna fail us from a visual inspection. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and fix those. If you ever watch this video, dude, seriously, you gotta, you gotta think very, very, look inward a little bit and Think about this terrible job you did and your lack of workmanship and just your lack of being a freaking human being, really. I know it's just a truck, but you know, a little bit of pride in your work. I am going to try to attempt to fix that nasty crack around the muffler with this. You know, in South Africa, we have, uh, we use a British product called Gun Gum, and this is the American equivalent of it. And uh, it's, it's kind of like a last ditch uh, you know fix although it, it tends to last and basically you just put this around the leak and it hardens and uh, You know it stops you from having to go pay a welder to weld up the exhaust because you know what this stuff's only like six dollars So let's give it a try. I love trying all these crappy little products these snake oil things on this truck to see if they work or not So the stop leak certainly worked for the steering pump that Lucas stuff. So let's see if this works Just to work. We're gonna have to clean the area we're going to well that's not gonna help is it the, the area we're going to patch up so wire brush a little wire wheel clean it up nicely let's go do that first and i'll put that in properly take a look there is a, a crack that goes all the way around here this is quite common on these kind of uh, mufflers because look there's not a lot of support here so i'm wearing eye protection so you've got to wear eye protection if you're going to be using a wire wheel Trust me, I've hurt myself in the face before. Anyway, I'm gonna clean up this whole area and then we're going to use this. Not a sponsor, it's only $6. Go buy it yourself, like I did. Yo. I mean, we can start to see just how deep that uh, that crack goes. I mean, it goes all the way up to here, basically, all the way down. But you can see it's a big gap, and there's a lot of air, <laughs> or exhaust fumes, I should say, escaping from there, which gives it a horrible sound. You know, in all honesty, to do this properly, I should, you know, make another mounting bracket or another hanger to kind of keep it in place. But I don't have time for that. We're going to go take this thing for smog. Uh, as soon as I'm done with this, so yeah, let's uh, let's get it done. I'm gonna go get some crud cutter to you know degrease the stuff to go and wipe this down. I'll be right back. I use this stuff for everything. Not a sponsor again. Definitely not a sponsor, but you know, I used to be worried about like, am I using the right? <laughs> cleaner for the right thing I need a degreaser I need a tar and wax remover I needed this or that and I found over uh, the course of just working on cars that as long as you get something to get the crap off it works and this seems to get rid of everything so I just use this now pretty much for everything and I like it and I like the name because crud is not a, <laughs> a word you see in in America much it's definitely a British thing, we use it in South Africa, so I like the name. And that's why I use it, no other reason. There are probably way more superior products out there. Anyway, nice and clean. That is a massive crack. 
seriously guys this really should be welded and if you have the option to weld weld but this cheap this this trucks all about getting things done on the cheap and if you're uh, someone who doesn't have access to welders or someone who is um, I don't know just maybe doesn't doesn't have the the money to do a weld job get someone to weld it up this is a, a viable option you know this is the kind of thing you're stuck in the bush you're supposed to mush this around apparently you're stuck on the side of the road in Africa on a dirt road you got nothing else you got a massive exhaust leak or you know it's driving you crazy get something like this so what does it say directions uh, where's the English there must be cool wire brush or sand to remove loose loose stuff need pouches before opening apply with putty knife pressing the putty into hole or leak I don't think I have a putty knife but I can go look around um, either way I'm gonna put some gloves on so I don't get this crap all over my hands I'll be right back so let's see come on there we go open it up what do we got I guess I'm just gonna use my finger at first start up there and give it a nice generous amount probably don't even need a bloody putty knife to be honest if I'm doing this wrong please feel free to let me know very loudly in the comments I mean for me I guess the idea is just get it into the gaps get it to block the leaks remember this stuff's supposed to like harden when it gets hot apparently you're supposed to have a 24 hour cure period I don't have that so you're supposed to put it on run idle the car for 10 minutes and then uh, 24 hours later it cures I'm gonna put it on the on here I'm gonna idle the car for 10 minutes and then we're gonna drive directly to the smog station and see if we can get this thing to pass smog it's gonna be interesting okay I mean, you're supposed to kind of push it into the cracks. That's why you need a putty knife, right? So I'm just going to force it in by being forceful with my finger. I, I don't think you need a freaking putty knife. I think they're just being, uh, I don't know, OTT, you know? You know when they say less is more? I'm going to say not, not in this particular situation. I'm going to say more is more. Come on. If this works, again, I'm going to be very impressed. The stop leak thing, I didn't expect it to work, but guess what? It works. I'm pretty happy with that. Like, that saved me a whole lot of hassle and a whole lot of money. And uh, you know what? It's a freaking truck. It's a work truck. It doesn't need to be perfect. I wouldn't do that on like a supercar or a, or, or a you know Porsche or something. I wouldn't do that on my Firebirds or something. Well, I don't know. Maybe I maybe I would to be honest. But like if it's your 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 drama, what do you call it? A garage queen dream car or something? Yeah. I mean then you don't want to be putting stop leaks and shit in there. But if it's a work truck, come on. Especially when those replacement parts are so cheap anyway, so even if you ruin them, it's not a big deal. I know I'm being over the top with this shit, but whatever. May as well go up there on the top, all the way around. I'm curious if you guys have had, like, um, success using this shit. I know in South Africa we use it all the time, but, you know, you gotta understand. When I was living in South Africa, I was a poor bugger and I used to have the worst cars and they'd be in such terrible shape and so we have these guys on the side of the road they have like oxyacetylene um, welders they're kind of like bush welders it's hard to explain but you know they also have like piles of random used mufflers that they've picked up off the ground that have fallen off cars and stuff and what they do is they will just quickly weld your muffler for you on the side of the road and they're pretty cheap and they, they do a good job I'm not gonna lie but those guys also have usually gun gum with them and if they spot a hole they just stick it on like what I'm doing here 
I'm being too excessive now. Now I'm getting arty. I'm like, may as well paint the whole thing so it looks uniform. Why not? Eh? If not, why not? Get all this crap out of the way. All right, I think I'm, I'm done. It's all like one color. So, yeah, it's supposed to say inlet over there. And now what we need to do, guys, is we need to turn this, this car on and idle it for 10 minutes. We need to bully it, as I like to say, for 10 minutes. And then uh, it'll harden enough that you can drive. They say don't race the engine when it's uh, drying or curing. Well, guess what? <laughs> we're going to, because we're going to go on the highway. Because anyone knows that if you're going to take your car in for smog, first take it for a nice long trip on the highway where it can heat up the catalytic converter so it actually works properly. Um, don't take your car directly to the smog place without heating up that cat because um, you p might fail, you know. So give yourself every chance you can. So we're going to go for a nice le leisurely drive on the highway, heat everything up, and then go to the smog station. So, messy, but it looks as if I've uh, filled in all the cracks, so to speak. Let's um, try not to get this all over the driveway here. I'd like to get my security deposit back. Now what I'm going to go do is start the vehicle and let's see if any like holes appear. I'll be right back. Okay, well that sucks. There's a bigger, worse exhaust leak over here, just after the catalytic converter. See there? You can actually see the water coming out of the exhaust there. That is a bad booger weld. Uh, <laughs> how can people do that? Well, this is really going to put this product to the test because now what I need to do is clean that part up and put the another whole whack of that stuff on. All right, well, that's life. It's really tough to get in there though. I don't think I can get the wire wheel in there because of the support bracket or whatever. Uh, nope, I'm gonna have to use that stupid wire brush. Okay. Sorry about that. I gotta say, at least it's after the catalytic converter and not before it because there will be a lot more pressure before the catalytic converter because it's obviously the exhaust gases are being pushed through the cat right and it does offer some resistance so there's back pressure whereas after the cat it's pretty much just free flow all the way out to the muffler and then out so I suppose there's a silver lining Oh, this is hard. It's all booger welds and sharp little nubbins and stuff. I mean, whoever did this is a moron. This whole exhaust system's kind of patched together. Not a very good job. Not impressed. I just don't know how well this is going to work. All right. Get in there. I am going to defeat you. You horrible exhaust leak. I'm gonna defeat you with snake oil. Seriously though, if this stuff works, I'm gonna be chuffed. It's gonna be another one of those like, oh, I didn't expect it to work, but it worked things. If it doesn't work, I'm not gonna be surprised. Um, just don't have high hopes for us passing smog if there's a freaking exhaust leak. I think they'll just like immediately fail you, even if your emissions are okay. They have all those rules, it's like, they do a visual inspection. If they see something missing or modified in any way, they're just like, nope. It's so dumb, like with my 78 Trans Am, there's like a heat riser pipe, right? It looks like a piece of tin foil. 
that goes from one of the manifolds up to the carburetor. Now you don't freaking need that, right? That's not necessary to run the car. It doesn't affect the emissions or anything. It's just about starting in cold weather. But they're like, oh, you don't have that. Sorry, fail you. And you know, smog's not cheap here. You pay 70 bucks or something each time. So they're more than happy. Like good places will give you one free retest. But you get places that just charge you once off and they're like, okay, come again, pay the 70 bucks, do not pass go, do not collect $200 or whatever it is. And also make the truck sound better because it sounds terrible with that leak. I've been wondering why this thing's got such a raspy sound coming from down underneath the driving area. Under the cab, I suppose you'd say. Well, this is the, this is the culprit right here. Can I get to that booger weld up there? So I presume it's leaking from there too. Let's try. Get my hand around. There we go. It's so difficult to get up there. Come on. Need more. I want more. And I need all the Promatex I can get yet. That's fucking terrible, shut up. I know any Sisters of Mercy fans out there? This is gonna be the test because this is where it's gonna just blow right out if this stuff doesn't work. You know, you're gonna see it flying everywhere. Um, let's see. Hopefully there's no leak on top. It's tough for me to reach there. I mean, there probably is, considering how badly they weld this. Let's see if we've got any left in this, this other one. I need as much as I can get. I do have one more pack. I got two, just in case. So, yeah, we're covered. Don't you worry. Okay. I think, I think we're doing pretty well here. Give it a little bit of a visual. I mean... The gaping hole is no longer visible. This looks like a gray putty. Certainly looks a sight better than that booger weld. Whoever welded this, if you ever watch this video, dude, seriously, you gotta, you gotta think very, very look inward a little bit and think about this terrible job you did and your lack of workmanship and just your lack of being a freaking human being really I know it's just a truck but you know a little bit of pride in your work all right I'm gonna put one more little one more little dab on one spot there that I, I can see this little spot that looks a little lacking there we are um, and then we're gonna try it out like I said, I'm a, I'm a little skeptical. I feel like this is gonna just blow right through, but hey, we gotta try, right? Just such a massive leak. See, I don't, th I don't see our chances being very good at stopping such a powerful leak. That's where you need to. You get this kind of tape stuff that you can wrap around. That would work here, but this stuff probably not. I'll be have to be realistic about it. You know, we're still gonna give it a shot. Whew, okay, guys, I'm now gonna just leave this for I'd say half an hour or so and then we're gonna see if we can start it and see what happens. I don't have a lot of hope to be honest with this. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. And not with this one, with the muffler, sure. I, th I mean, that's what this stuff is designed for, but I didn't realize there was such a, a massive leak up here at the front with this booger weld, you know? So, uh, a little doubtful about that. We'll find out though. We put a whole bloody wall of this stuff on there. See, there's one area I haven't really filled up that I want to quickly, just in case. It is right over there. Come on, come on. 
in the in you get you piece of shit. Okay, so sea milk's up in the truck. He's gonna start it in a second. And this is we gotta watch this area here to see if it blows out or not. Yeah, it blew out, oh, great. but um, it, not as much as I, I thought. So maybe it is supposed to cure for 24 hours. I mean, if it had cured longer, it, it wouldn't have blown out. Oh, okay. yeah, that's... That didn't work. <clears throat> so now, on the same line of what I've been doing since we failed with the gun gum or whatever it was, Permatex, Going to try this, heat wrap. This is like 10 or $11, so it's a little more expensive, but this should be able to hopefully fix that, uh, that big leak that we're having at the front, because the uh, Permatex is fine for the rear muffler, it fixed that, but that other one is just too much of a, too much of a high pressure leak. So according to the instructions, I need to wear gloves, put my hand in the sea, and then wrap it. So let's figure it out. So my plan was to scrape all the Permatex off and then put the wrap, but that stuff hardens like, it's super tough. I try to wire brush some of it off. It's awkward, I can't really get my wire brush in there. And it's tough, it's not coming off. So the, the only other option I really have is I put more of it in there, because I'm not gonna run this truck f until tomorrow morning anyway. So put more of it in there, hopefully it'll cure. I'm then gonna sand all around it and I'm just gonna wrap on top of it. Maybe we'll have a double, double whammy kind of a situation, you know? Because I'm surprised how hard that stuff gets. I mean, obviously it's supposed to. Anyway, let's get to it. Go to prep, prep the surface. I've wrapped it in this resin stuff. It's very uh, time sensitive, so you have to dunk it and then quickly get it on there. It's not perfect. I'm not gonna lie, I could have done it better, but with this bloody support and transmission cross member thing in the way, it's almost impossible to do it easily. So, anyway, now I've got to put the silver stuff on it. Okay, not the best job, I admit. And uh, <laughs> it is just a kind of a pikey last stitch effort to see if I can make this work. I have covered the main part, which you all saw, which is kind of here. I've wrapped twice over with the actual fiber and then this this is just to hold the fiber in place. I say you're supposed to run your car, heat it up because heat cures this. It's the next morning, let's see. Let's try it out. And that sounds like it's not leaking. I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit before I drive it though. Lovely V10 sound. Let's go underneath and see. So one thing they don't tell you about this uh, exhaust repair wrap stuff is that when it's curing, it smokes, and it smokes a lot. It looked like the car was on fire, and it smells like asbestos. It's really not good. So we drove around our neighborhood with the car looking like it was on fire. We also took it for a nice stretch on the highway to try and burn some of this stuff off, and it took about 45 minutes for the smoking to stop. Anyway, once it had stopped smoking, we took it in for the smog check and what a big surprise, it failed. Yo, did it pass? No. <laughs> no? But it's not as bad as it sounds. Come on in. The, uh, Come in here. Yeah, okay. Basically, he says the computer 
it is not passing the catalyst, the evaporative system. It says after the, the repair that I did to the exhaust, we need to drive it about 50 to 100 miles. Oh, okay. For it to actually like do a self check. Oh. So we have to do that and then we can bring it back in and hopefully it'll pass. So how do we do that illegally without plates and registration? We're going to have to look it up online. Um, Cause you know, it's like drive it slowly, the speed limit, whatever, just do 50 oh, okay. to 100 miles. Yeah, that's going to be kind of difficult. Yeah, like where? Off-road, maybe? Just drive around our neighborhood, I guess. I guess that's annoying. Yeah, imagine going around in circles in a one-block well, area for 50 well, miles. We'll take turns. There's got to be a way we can do it, but... Um, yeah, you see, it's just not ready. All right. The evaporative system, the ODB2 monitors are not ready. Well, I can tell you, it's a hell of a lot better to work in here now that everything's clean. I mean... I mean, actually, I'm still wearing gloves, but I can just touch stuff and it smells good. It doesn't smell like rat urine anymore. And uh, this is the first thing we're going to do is replace the spark plug wires because of the rat chewage. I'm going to start on that side because it looks quite simple. You know, we've got these kind of short plugs that go from these um, coils. I, I'm guessing this is a wasted spark system. I'm not 100% sure, but you know, here are coil packs. And here we have our plug wires, and they're so easy to get to. This is a dream compared to most of the cars I work on. So let's uh, get started, shall we? Very easy to get these ones in, obviously. They're quite nice looking and out of the way. This, like I said, I'm gonna repaint at some point in the near future. But now these ones have this kind of like plastic railing that I have to figure out how to unclip. Shouldn't be too difficult, just looks like you pop, pop it out here and roll around. So let me get that off and get these replaced. So we'll be able to one by one get around all this stuff, but since I have to replace the air filter anyway, what I'm going to do is just remove the, the air filter box and this tube so I can get down to the spark plug wires easily. Mm, this is a, <laughs> a little more annoying than I was expecting, but you know, it's not that bad. What I have noticed though is that the heater core has been bypassed. It's actually the wire, the heater core um, tubes over here have just been cut. See, someone just cut them, one, two. And uh, run, see there's actually a missing, it's supposed to clip in there. Um, and this, this is where the heater core normally would go and they just rooted it back in on itself. What a surprise, that would be the third American vehicle that I've owned that has this problem. My 91 Firebird, I just replaced the heater core. My 68 Corvette, the heater core went bad. And now a 2001 Dodge Ram. So that's annoying. Replacing heater cores is one of my like least favorite things to do. But hey, what do you know? I'm going to be really good at it soon. Okay, so they're all rooted properly. They've got their shielding. Now this is different to that plastic red crap earlier. This is supposed to be heat shielding, but it's also not, it's not capable of shielding you against extreme heat. It's just over the valve cover here. So that like basically protects the plugs of the valve covers. Uh, I got it all in that little rail, all the way to here. Uh, they're all nice and kind of where they should be. Let's see, they're not binding or I feel like this, yeah, I guess that's just the way it is. I replaced them just as they were, it's usually the best thing to do in these circumstances. Okay, now, uh, before I continue, I'm going to start the car. And the reason for this is there was a little bit of confusion earlier. I did, you know pull a couple of them out and I had to replace when I put the wrong one so it wasn't long enough. So just in case I've swapped any of these around, we'll know real quick because if you try to start a car where these have been swapped around, you'll hear a massive misfire, a, a backfire, the engine won't run properly. So let's try it out. Cross fingers that it's okay and then we'll put the air filter in. Let's listen. Well, 
the air filter's not terrible, but it's definitely dirty. I've been in a dusty area, so it's good to replace it. Always, if ever you get a new vehicle, I, I mean, it's so cheap, you may as well just replace the air filter. Helps you a lot. Sometimes you find some nasty surprises. Dope air filter are made with wicks. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, this is different to the one I took out. Look, it's got some foam. These are definitely better uh, for catching all the dust particles. I mean, look, it's a truck. You're supposed to be driving off road. You're supposed to be coming across a lot of dust, a lot of crap. So it's good to have a decent air filter. This is not decent by any <laughs> stretch of the imagination, but you know, it's a step up from just what I took out anyway. Not gonna lie, getting those little clips on right there at the back near the firewall wasn't that easy. But a little bit of perseverance, and it's done. You know, I'm gonna try it. I'm just gonna try it. Let's try one little hurrah. I mean, that looks kinda cool as it is, just me shaving off a little bit, but let me go all the way. If that silver is gonna make the world a difference. I'd say that's a win. That'll do nicely. That looks way better than that cheesy red. I mean, maybe if he'd done it right, but it was like painted on with, I guess, like nail polish type. It wasn't that bad, but it was it was not great. That looks so much better, so much classier. All right. You probably thought I forgot about this, didn't you? Nope. Hey, look, it says guaranteed to stop all seal leaks or your money back. Wonder how many people have actually uh, asked for their money back. <laughs> Because with this kind of thing, you usually put it in when it doesn't work. You're just like, ah, oh well, what the hell. Now, um, half the internet's going to be screaming at me right now. Don't put that in your system. You're going to destroy it. The other half's going to be like, yeah, that worked for me once. Guess what, guys? The steering box leaks on this thing badly. And I'm not even joking. I've been topping up that power fluid. That's why this thing had power fluid, power steering fluid underneath the hood when we bought it. So I've been topping it up and I park it and it leaks out. So. The steering box is cool. That's great. The steering box is going to have to be redone in any case, right? And I may as well replace it with one of those redhead ones. Those are really good for trucks, apparently. I've been seeing that online. But in the meantime, why not give this a try? Like I said, the worst that could happen is the power steering pump and the steering um, box goes wrong and. All in all, it's about 500 bucks worth of parts, which is a lot, but at the same time, it's all worn out anyway. So let's try it out. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I can always try and flush the system and all that. So, you know, I've weighed out the risks versus rewards. And basically what you have to do here is apparently you fill it up, right? All the missing stuff. And this is quite low now. So you fill it up with this stuff and then you run it for a while. I won't be able to give you guys instant results, but what I can do is next time you get an update on this truck, which will be the next week or the week after, I'll be able to tell you if it stopped the leaks. And then, Lucas, if it works, and I tell everyone it works, how about you uh, give us old Worthless Whips a bit of a sponsor, eh? Because I could have gone to any other type of product that does this, but I went for you. And you know why? Because you were the first one on the shelf. Anyway, let me do this with both hands. As you can hear with the uh, brass fanfare in the background, there's a reason to celebrate. No leaks. I can't believe that crap actually worked. You know, I'm really against that kind of thing. We'll see how permanent this is, but what you can see there are old leaks and old things. Um, but yeah. All right, this was just getting unbelievably frustrating. I mean, we went through every part of this freaking truck. We looked under it, we looked at all the hoses, we looked for leaks, we tested everything, and we just couldn't get it to pass the freaking EVAP test. We couldn't even get the test to actually start. The problem was, was that 
if we were to replace everything, it was going to cost a lot more than we wanted to spend. So we had to try our best to pinpoint exactly what stupid part was not allowing this test to happen. And unfortunately, the guys at the smog station can't really tell us. It's like this weird hidden secret that we had to find out ourselves. So that's exactly what we did. This is where things get interesting. These are the uh, charcoal canisters or okay. canister slash whatever. I don't even know. <laughs> Are you just making shit up now? I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure this is the charcoal canister, and I don't know what this is all about. So sure, this is the reactor. <laughs> this is all got to do with stupid smog stuff. That's yeah. all I know, and it's really annoying. So again, we have to try and see if we can spot any um, obvious leaks here. Wow. Uh, well, it's going to be where things connect. Yeah. yeah so like here. All right, I just pulled off this. Sure, let's have a look. Now, let's get a close-up. Look at that, that's not good. Oh, it's cracked, eh? That's very possibly causing an good. issue. Good, good. Yeah, finally we found good. something. Now, how am I gonna fix this? I don't know. I need, to, <laughs> <laughs> I need to somehow make this seal properly, you know? Sure. Feels like inside it's okay, just around this, this edge, but maybe if I get a hose clamp on there or something, okay. or a zip tie. You think so? Yeah, this is really not very good. This is very perished. Honestly, if we were smart, we'd find a replacement. Sure. Let's see if I can take the whole thing off. Yeah, look, there's one. Two. Okay. Yeah, this thing's crappy, man. It's very perished and rubbish. It's probably it's still working. Does, eh? Yeah, it's probably still working, but to be honest, if we could go to Auto O'Reilly's and see if we could get a... Sure. A replacement then there would be no doubt you know what i mean yeah so that don't speak <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah all right and then this this one's also feeling a little crappy this this whatever this horrible thing is here but i, I feel like it's probably okay you know yeah let's take a proper look because this goes all the way over to there this is blocked off yeah you see when your hand looks like this <laughs> after touching so-called rubber that means it's perishing and turning to crap. Sure. So yeah, at the very least, I think this needs to be replaced. Yeah. I don't trust the integrity of this for shit. No, it's yeah. a liar and a cheat. It really is. I think this could be our culprit. I think so? Yeah, is I mean- Is there anything else though that we could look at? Well, let's take a look at these. Cause that's, this is where that ends, right? Yeah, but don't forget, this still goes into the fuel tank. Oh, crap. It's like, it goes, back to the fuel tank and into the fuel tank and all sorts of shit to do with the fuel tank. Great. Let's get this trans fluid up here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? This, has, this is cold, man. Yeah. Creamy as shit. <laughs> yeah, creamy trans fluid. All right. Yeah, that seems okay. This line still seems okay. It's a little long in the tooth, but it'll survive. Sure. Where does that go? It goes into the frame, which obviously then leads, there's like a, cl a clamp that goes to the frame and that probably goes to the um, fuel tank. There's or something. no way we can check the fuel tank is the problem. We can't go in it. No, but it's not that it's, we'll see where it connects sure. to on the fuel tank. Right. Um, yeah, this one's fine. This one that goes all the way from the, the sure. engine, that's fine. Right. This freaking annoying thing though. That's the only thing that really Cause that does look bad. That, that's does. definitely not going to seal properly, right? Probably not. Mm. It's also one of those things that doesn't need to seal properly. It, it does. I guess if it's going to run the test, eh? Yeah, this is this whole thing has supposed to supposed to hold like a psi of pressure or whatever, right? Yeah, one. Yeah, so one psi. Yeah, I mean, this thing's disintegrating in my hands. Red tail hawk. Nice. Um. So I think this needs to be replaced. Okay. So that's one thing. Um, I wonder if they'll even have something like this at Auto O'Reilly's. Probably not. That's a very random thing. Yeah. We'll have to order it online. It's worth checking. We can Let's look Just keep it off. Like, we know where it goes, right? Yeah. Bring yeah, it yeah. inside and... Yeah, we'll do a little test. I mean, a little check online. Let's see if we can go further down this, okay. this rabbit hole. So, <clears throat> that connects to the frame. Uh, that little clamp goes all the way on a steel hard line. And the steel hard line goes all the way down here onto the top of the tank. See, it's up there. Okay. So I feel like, I mean, shit. 
I can feel some rubber junk on top there, but it feels good. Okay, good. Good enough. Stop. <laughs> yeah, you know. As long as it feels good. Yeah, this rubber junk. I won't so, get in your business. <laughs> right. I, I feel like that's totally okay. okay. So that's not an issue. There's no rat chewage. Um, so that's steel that goes into the fuel, obviously. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the evap purge thingy. Okay. So it's got nothing to do with the fuel lines, which probably run down this side of, yeah, I forgot to, got it, those are the, yeah, fuel rails. And the fuel line and the return line. Right. Yeah, so, okay. okay. I think this might be our culprit. Let's go try to find a replacement to this it. piece of shit. Replacement to this it. piece of shit. Nice. And then hopefully we can fix this and we can stop lying around under this. this is <laughs> yeah, this is, this is what it's like working underneath one of these things. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> actually, <laughs> brilliant because with a car you gotta jack it up yeah this you don't this is not gonna fall on us nope it can roll <laughs> it's not gonna roll don't worry yeah we're good yeah this is so much better than working on a car i'll be honest trucks are you know if only they were like cars but they're not <laughs> that's a good quote i wish i had an inspirational poster of that <laughs> exactly trucks are so much easier to work on in every aspect around the engine you know underneath so much easier yeah it's much easier to be a truck guy than a car guy it is that's why they're gonna hate they're gonna hate that simple, truck guys hate this folk. phrase simple folk truck folk <laughs> oh, <laughs> fighting words yeah i'm a truck guy now yeah kind i think of. they just disowned you yeah i found out what that mystery thing is it goes down to here you know that thing with the cap we're wondering what it was yeah this is like a vacuum actuator to switch between four-wheel drive and not uh -huh. um it's like diff lock or something this thing has it's right here on the diff right right and so what that does is it obviously engages or disengages the front wheel drive or, or at least the diff locks or something sure. so that's what that is but now the actual tubes come down here okay these these are the tubes so they come all the way down here okay and again i'm not seeing any rat chews yeah or anything from here it looks pretty legit to me Okay. All the way down. So we, we're gonna have to scoot all the way down and just check the whole way because they run all the way along the side here. Yep. Okay, so yeah, we need to go follow them, see what we can see. So let's keep going. So, uh, this might look a little bit weird. We've got a child's straw, a chopstick, and a sharpie stuck into this um, absolutely terrible fitting. You know, the Dodge doesn't replace this one rubber grommet thing, this whatever you would call it, a fitting. They have to sell you all of the EVAP lines and everything for like $180 or something, which is ridiculous. But you can see this thing is basically di disintegrating. Like if I touch it, this black stuff comes on my fingers. This, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, it's, it's absolute nonsense. So you can see it's definitely got a groove in there, which I don't think is supposed to be there. And sure. that's probably where it's leaking the EVAP stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to basically take this original fitting because we can't buy a new one no and also no one on the forums knew what this they some people knew but everyone said you had to either make your own thing and you or you had to buy the entire system yeah which is ridiculous so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try take this uh just basic rtv silicon sealant right and i'm going to recreate this whole thing on the outside like seal it with new silicone and i've put this in so it doesn't go into the holes and block the holes and then i've kind of taken this old packaging from a, a ring camera i think it was and i found a place where i'll be able to like place it in there so it can set in the right shape mm -hmm. and hopefully once it's all set i can trim it all off and it'll be a a new sealed unit unit or something but of course i don't have any gloves and this is going to be messy can't we just seal this entire thing and use it again well that's what i'm going to do you're not going to peel it off no, no, I'm se I'm basically sealing that's the whole thing I and... okay i thought you were going to make a new mold no 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 okay. i'm i'm making this thing work again basically gotcha. so it's not going to be able to leak because it's going to be covered in in like proper make silicone. the black black hose pants work again yeah exactly that's the whole thing yeah my presidential campaign that sounds good anyway we'll get back to you once it's done and drying and you can see so i'm going to get real messy here Probably good Probably enough, good. and I'll just it too much. yeah, I'll just hold that there. Then I was going to put it in there, but it's not necessary if I can balance it. Sure. So let's see how how I can balance this garbage. 
What is this food? I don't know. What food? You, there's a bag of food there. I didn't even... It's a snack. Oh, it's those chickpeas. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yes, peas for chicks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Cool. We'll see you soon. So, if you take a look, that ridge is gone. And so it's actually a proper sealed, complete hole. I can also touch everything now and it's not coming off of my hands. So it stopped disintegrating. So that should hold the seal. Now all I need to do is uh, remove these two straw thingies, which I'll do the same thing as just cut around, cut around them with a knife. And uh, then we can give it a, a, a test, a suck test, so to speak. Okay, so now what we need to do is see if it's actually gonna hold air, so. It's kind of tough to, you know, I've, I've actually cut this a bit too long but I need to try to like block it if I can. Maybe easier to do it this way. The hole? Mm. Nice. Tastes good? Silicone doesn't taste that bad actually. Okay. I think what we need to do obviously is when we get it in, I'm, I'm gonna double it up. I'm actually going to get like a little hose clamp. That's and a good idea. Clamp it on as well. Sure. But I really don't think it's this side that's the issue. Um, as long as those are nice and tight, it'll be okay. So yeah, I mean, I think this this will do the trick. You can see like, now we actually have a complete thing right. um, and it's not crumbling and it's got some structure to it so I can actually put a hose clamp on it. Before, if I hose clamped it down, there would have been leaks everywhere right. and, and whatnot, but now it's like a solid kind of new piece. So it, right. looks, it looks ugly. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could clean it up, but there's no need. No. This will do the trick and hopefully we'll be good. Cool. The big one, the small one. Come on, in you go. There you go. Now, where is it supposed to go? On that side, okay, I found it. I hate this. <laughs> I feel... It feels like it's making a much better seal than before. Good. I'm just gonna put it like that and hopefully that does the trick. So the next step was to plug in the old Bluetooth ODB2 sensor thing to see if it was throwing up any codes and then to see if it would run the EVAP test. That way we could know whether it was worth it or not to go try to get it smogged. But that required us driving 50 to 100 miles without license plates on the truck. And guess what? There are cops everywhere. Other effing satisfied. Look at that, it passed. We did it! I can't believe it, that little trick. <laughs> that, that little pudding. That piece of crap that I did, it worked. Ass piece of shit. It worked. You mother effers. So that means we can now take it into the smog shop and get it certificated and then get an actual plate on this Oh thing. my gosh. I can't believe Finally. it. Finally. I can't believe it. Dude. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Academy. I'd like to thank this yeah. shit. Wheeler and dealers out there, go F yourself. Yeah. The people that keep selling us these overpriced things that like, oh, they're in great shape and they never pass smog. Yeah, what the hell is it with these people that can't get a car to pass smog? Why do we have to do all the hard work every time? Why? Because when you sell a car legally in California, it has to pass smog. It does. It's part of the rules, but guess what? That never happens with us. Nope. Pieces of shit. Bunch of wankers. Yes. Dude. All right, cool. Let's go, let's go take care of it. Just been told by the technician that we passed. Nice. This is, I, I think we probably give them the most business out of anyone. Because <laughs> every car that we yeah. get here on Worthless Whips never passes smog. <laughs> and we always have to come in multiple times. So they probably see us more than anyone else. I wonder what that's for. So guys, um, you won't believe what a huge, ridiculous amount of nonsense we just went through. Um, the lady was so confused at the DMV because although we bought this thing out of state, I mean, we didn't buy it out of state. It's a, it's a California car, but we bought it from a guy just over the border. And so because the bill of sale was, you know, a Nevada bill of sale, it threw such a wrench in the work and it took, how many hours were we here? Four. Four hours. And then we ended up still having to just pay stupid amounts of tax. So, you know, this is one thing that you forget about when you're buying a car is you're like, oh, I got a good deal. It's not true. You have to take into account, especially with us, when whenever we buy a car, thousand like, well, hundreds of dollars can be all the way up to a thousand dollars in tax. So you always have to bear that in mind when you live in uh, what do they call this place, California? Yeah, it's <laughs> a lower tax than that, some other states. True, but you still have to pay smog. 
You have yep. to get it fixed for smog. Yep. Um, that part sucks. And that's actually a huge expense. If you if you don't know what you're doing, and you take it into mechanic to get it sorted out for smog, you could be in for thousands of dollars if you don't know what you're doing. You know. Yep. So luckily with this car, there's a bit of elbow grease, a couple of parts here and there, and it ended up costing. I'd say less than 200 to get everything done. Yeah. Because the oxygen sensor was pretty expensive. It was like 70 bucks or something. But all in, less than 200 bucks and uh, smogged. And a good couple hundred bucks in now in registration. But guess what? It's legal. Yeah. And we did it. So, Seamilk, what do you think we can do to improve the look of this thing? I mean, it is the most like stereotypically early 2000s, really ugly. I can see why this is attractive when it came out. But not now, like this did not age well. It looks like a dumb dinosaur or something. So I think like the first thing we could probably do is take care of the grill. Yeah, I think so. Let's take a look at this grill that we have on here. This hood, by the way, is a replacement hood because it's got a VIN number sticker inside for a Ram 1500, the wrong one. And that's why it's got sport right. down the side. And apparently the sport thing was like a package, just an appearance package, which I think these are the sport bumpers as well. Okay. So I think what happened is they probably got it from a wrecked vehicle and they were like, well, if we're getting the hood, we may as well get the bumper. Sure. Anyway, this grill, for those of you who are worried, we're not trashing it. We're just going to take it aside, might fix it up and put it on later again. But it, it's missing paint. It's completely sun faded and damaged. It looks awful. And let's be honest, it's a very unattractive grill anyway. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> you know, what they were trying to go for with this look of this truck was the big rigs. Uh, that was the whole point of having this like lowered thing. It was to target those people, I guess, who dream of being truckers. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? I think it's a cool job. You get to chill out on the road all yeah, the time and, sure. you know, you get to think. I wouldn't say I'd fantasize about it. Yeah. You get to see those guys always sharing their gaming rigs in the back of trucks. Sure. It's kind of cool. Anyway, we're going to see if we can take this off because we've actually got a replacement here, uh, which was cheap. It was 80 bucks. And, uh, well, it's just a simple black. It's what they call a sport grill. It's just a plastic thing. It's nothing fancy. But we're going to put it on and uh, see what it looks like. So we're going to take a before and an after picture of the truck. Cool. Okay. Is this coming off? Something binding? Is this a binding agreement? <laughs> Ugliest grill. Nice, nice. Yeah, no. <laughs> Thought it would, but no. no. That looks way worse without it. That looks just like a broken car. Yeah, now it just looks like a broken car. See, this one doesn't have any bolts on the on the on the bottom. Right. It's got this weird thing. Sure. Let's just hope that the top ones kind of line up and, and bolt in. Because that'll be our saving grace. I kind of wish it wasn't shiny. Yeah, we can paint it though, don't yeah, we? Can. We can just make it matte black. You know? <laughs> don't even have to have a jack or anything. Nope. It's my favorite part. You don't need jack stands or anything. That seems... Well... That is way better. It is, no, it's way better, but that gap below... Well, that's because this, this, this bumper, bumper anyway. has always been a bit... Oh, it's just f dot. Yeah. And we're planning to replace the bumper anyway. Yeah. Okay, cool. Dude, that's well, an that improvement. Easy. Big time. There's a distance between us. I've uh, constructed something here. What's that? I've taken kind of like a breaker bar, uh -huh. put a big socket on it. Nice. I'm going to put it on my little ratchet over here. That's and hopefully, huge. hopefully it'll give me enough leverage to take these massive bolts off that hold the, the bumper on. So. Let's see. Well, you know, here we've got our so it looks like four bolts over here. <laughs> yeah, we got four bolts. They're mm -hmm. pretty big. Um, and of course, we've got the fog lights that are wired up, which I'm going to have to take off. But I'm going to just try to get right into it. I have to crawl underneath to get enough purchase on these things, and then we'll okay. see what happens. Let's see. All right, let's see. Okay, so first things first. <laughs> oh, got it. She's a little runaway. <laughs> yeah, dude. Too long is it gonna hit the ground <laughs> maybe I, mean, I think i can persuade it a little here 
I'll try and maneuver it out, and then you. Okay. I'll rush to. Ready. Yeah. Ready. Good. I'm filming. Oh. <laughs> it's not incredible. It's hanging by something. Oh, there we go. Yeah. What do you know? I got it. <laughs> All right. You just toss it on the ground. Jim, toss All it. right. Yeah. Look at that. Oh. That's all. Let's see the truck. I'm more curious to see what the truck looks like without it. <laughs> well, well, that's a big slab. It looks like a bus or a Mack truck, doesn't it? Yeah, it's actually kind of cool. Yeah, I kind of like it like that. Let's just leave it like that. Yeah, yeah, why not? No, but seriously, though. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, cool. We're all done, guys. Yep. I guess the fun part is going to be actually unwrapping this monstrosity. We have to show the scale of this, so... Yeah, this is... Okay, let me use the wide lens. Maybe even better if I just yes. sit on it. Sit on it. Look at that. This thing is huge. Guys, this I, is... I can't even reach the sides. That's no. how wide it is. Wow. Yeah. It is massive. Yeah, it's really cool, though. Hopefully. <laughs> wow, that works so that well. Worked. Yeah. Let's find out if that is it, the other side's probably just spinning around. Look at that, guys. Yeah, this is just ridiculous. This is adding a lot of weight to the truck, I'll tell you that. Oh, wow, yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. Let's make it more front heavy. Yeah, I think so. Hey, it's got the power. It's an 8 liter V10. Sure. But wow, that's 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 not a one man job, that's for no, sure. No, no. Well, let's get started. <laughs> And that was it guys for this truck so far. Um, I think we did a pretty good job making it look a lot better than it used to. Never thought these things looked very good in particular in the beginning and I think it's quite an improvement, not only in the way it runs and drives because it's actually our daily kind of picker upper and throw stuff in the back. We don't have to worry about it too much because it's used. At the same time, we also think we've improved the, uh, the appearance and just the feel of when you're driving down the road this thing is massive it takes up like both lanes basically it's pretty cool to have around hope you guys enjoyed the uh, saga of the dodge ram we do plan on changing the color at some point in the future um, we thought it might be a good episode to see like what a really cheap paint job would would entail so we might end up doing that and uh, we appreciate you guys sticking around and being patient we hope to have a new project car in the stable very very soon and we'll see you on the next one